Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be simplifying some math today. We are looking at properties of integer exponents. Something that you will need to know as we're getting started is negative exponents. 2 to the power of negative 4 is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the power of positive 4. If you have worked with negative exponents before, that's great. Basically, negative exponents move the, the number um, up or down. So if it's just written normally, you move it to the denominator. If it's a negative exponent in the denominator, you'd move it to the top. But negative exponents move the number, and then the exponent becomes positive. So one more thing that we are going to be using pretty extensively today is an exponent rule. This is the rule. If you have a base of 3 and you multiply times a base of 3 and you've got the exponent of x and y, then you can keep that same base and just add the exponents. Now you may be looking at this 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y and 3 to the power of x plus y and say, what in the world does this mean? Well, let me show you an example. Here's an example. If I had 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 2, that's the same thing as 3 to the power of 4 plus 2, or in other words, 3 to the power of 6. The way it looks like when we do the math is this. 3 to the power of 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 to the power of 2 is 3 times 3. So as you can see, it's the same thing as multiplying 3 times itself 6 times. So this is an exponent rule that whenever you have the same base and the base needs to be the same for this to work, then you can just add the exponents. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, this rule applies to both positive and negative exponents. So let's go ahead and just jump right into looking at um, a rule with negatives. Go ahead and solve this one. You can pause the recording, take a look at that. Um, you have 7 to the power of 7, and it's multiplied times 7 to the power of negative 3. So what we're going to do is add those numbers, just adding the exponents, 7 plus negative 3, or in other words, 7 minus 3, will give us 7 to the power of 4, which is 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. If you want to write it out, it is 2,401, but we don't necessarily need to do that. We can leave it as 7 to the power of 4 for our purposes. We're just trying to show the rule that if you have the same base, then you add the exponents. All right. Let's look at another one with negative exponents. If you have 8 to the power of 2 times 8 to the power of negative 6, go ahead and try and figure this one out. What would you get? Well, my base is the same, 8, so I can just add the exponents. 2 plus negative 6, or 2 minus 6, gives me negative 4. So I have 8 to the power of negative 4. Now, this is when I have to remember the rules for positive and negative exponents. With a negative exponent, I would rewrite that as 1 over 8 to the power of positive 4. You want your answers to have positive exponents at the end, so we're going to have to rewrite this as a fraction, moving that 8 to the power of negative 4 into the denominator and making our exponent positive. Now, knowing this rule adds a little bit of deeper understanding to a memorized rule that we have. So I'm going to give us this one, 11 to the power of 2 times 11 to the power of negative 2. Remembering our rules, that's the same thing as 11 to the power of 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So if I have 11 to the power of 0, do you remember that rule? If you raise something to the power of 0, it always gives you 1. Why does it do that? Because of this rule. 11 to the power of 2 and 11 to the power of negative 2 would give you 11 to the power of 2 over 11 to the power of 2. Anything divided by itself gives you 1. So this rule of adding the exponents and the rule of positive and negative exponents kind of go together to show us the reason why a 0 exponent will always give us the answer of 1. So just a little bit of understanding to a rule that you probably memorized in school, but something that, that may come up. All right, now it's time for a word problem. Sometimes I feel like I speak 4 to the power of 10 words per class. If I teach 10, 
10 to the power of 4 words per class. If I teach 10 to the power of 3 classes per year, how many words do students ignore per year as a math teacher? So what I'm trying to figure out is my 10 to the power of 4 words that I speak per class multiplied times the 10 to the power of 3 classes that I teach per year. Let's take a look. We have the same base, so I can add my exponents. So the answer is 10 to the power of 7, or in other words, 10 million unlistened to words. That's an awful lot of throat lozenges right there. All right, so hopefully that um, word problem helped to show that, again, we're doing the same exact rules into practical situations. This will always work. You have to have the same bases, and then you just add the exponents. Just a quick reference on our Common Core Anchor. Here it is, um, the Common Core Anchor and also the Anchor for Pennsylvania Math 8. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.